one of the icons of R&D at, at SciEx, Tom Covey. Maybe, maybe I can ask you the first question, which is, you know, what thinking led to the development of uh, the sure. Selexion device? Yeah. Well, Gary, um, the motivation behind our interest in, in differential ion mobility spectrometry came from a real recognition that improvements to limits of quantitation came from two different angles, right? I mean, one is the obvious, improvements in sensitivity, which basically is just stuff of more ions into the mass analyzer. It's something we're always working on, and we have been from the beginning. But second way is to reduce chemical noise, which will improve the signal to noise um, from a given amount of ions if you reduce the chemical noise. So that's where our interest in DMS really was originally focused. It separates in a way highly orthogonal to, to mass spectrometry. So in combination, it should in principle improve signal to noise and lower LOQs. Now, um, we went down the route of differential ion mobility rather than conventional low field drift tubes um, because it operates with a continuous ion beam, very similar to a quadrupole, pole, um, as opposed to these drift tubes which require pulse ion beams, and that would just lead to a loss of release. Were there any kind of surprises that you know came up during the development of that device? It's yeah, actually there were a lot, but one, one that really uh, burns in my mind is when we began the project, um, we didn't really fully appreciate the tremendous improvement, nor did the scientific field really that could be gained in, in separation power when one adds chemical modifiers to the, okay. to the, the transport gas, um, invoking the so-called cluster decluster mechanism. So it became clear that this mode of separation was unique and, and, and not available with other kinds of mobility, including the drift tube type or other forms of RF-driven mobility devices like fans right. that, that use um, curved electrodes and homogenous fields. Oh, excellent. But can you kind of maybe highlight where you think, you know, the major push for Selexion has been in, in the marketplace, in particular in the, in the farm industry? Sure, there's a lot of interesting things developing. <clears throat> As I mentioned, this, this lowering chemical noise, but just separation power comes to mind. And um, there are many avenues. One uh, avenue that this, this technique is, appears to be opening up is for two-dimensional high-resolution Separation. And by that I mean, for instance, of glycans and glycopeptides. Okay. Yeah, for it. Yeah. Um, so it, what I'm referring to in this case, the first dimension would be conventional reverse phase LC, followed by a gas phase mobility device leveraging the unique interactions of sugars with divalent cations like calcium and gerium. Um, again, um, leveraging this cluster decluster mechanism, which is so this, this is something. What do you expect we could see in, in the future with respect right. to Selexion? Well, it's, it's, it's got a lot of room for improvements. Can you improve in terms of things like the resolution, the ion transmission efficiency, um, and of course the development of unique scientific applications like what we just, just talked about. Um, but for those um, who are interested in learning more about the fundamentals, about um, instrumentation about the new applications, the, direct, the overall directions that DMS MS is headed. We've just um, finished writing a 100-page overview article that we were asked to write for Mass Spectrometry Reviews, which will be published this year in 2015. And it's the first sort of comprehensive overview of, of this technology since it was originally invented by Gorbachev in, in 1982. That's great. Well, Tom, thanks for the time. Appreciate the information. And of course, you know, look, looking towards the future, you know, keep uh, tuned into Science and Science.